Hey everyone. So today we are talking about calcium channel blockers or CCBs as part of our cardiovascular drug series. Now don't let this picture scare you. I'm going to break it down for you. We don't all, all have to be a molecular biologists to know what's going on with our calcium channels. So calcium channels and the cardiovascular system. You'll recall that the cardiovascular system is our heart, our circulatory system, and all of the blood that goes around through it. Well, what is a calcium channel? Well, a calcium channel uh, allow calcium into the heart and calcium causes the heart and arteries to squeeze or contract more strongly. So your heart doesn't beat without the help of those calcium ions triggering it to pump. Now by blocking calcium from entering calcium channels, CCBs allow blood vessels to relax and open while others can slow the heart rate. So with a lack of calcium contracting everything, you start to relax those vessels and more relaxed vessels allow a greater amount of oxygen and blood flow into the myocardium or the heart muscle. And that lowers blood pressure. Calcium channel blockers are also used to treat a variety of cardiovascular conditions, namely hypertension or high blood pressure. We uh, also use it to treat arrhythmias, which is an irregular heartbeat. Uh, you can see right there, that's a normal heartbeat starting over there. And then when you see that heartbeat get a little bit more messed up, that's what an arrhythmia is. So you see those peaks are normally even and well-formed. And then the arrhythmia starts, and that is an irregular beat. And that interferes with the way that heart is pumping blood. And if not enough blood is getting where it needs to be in the body, that can cause some serious, serious issues. It can also be used to treat angina or chest pain. And I should point out that we have another video on angina, um, anti-anginal and anti-arrhythmic drugs. So you can check that out if you want to see it in more detail. Now, important notes for our CCBs. Some calcium channel blockers have important drug interactions with other drugs and foods. They are some of those uh, grapefruit drugs. You have to avoid grapefruit while you're taking them or else the drugs will not work properly or as they should. And CCBs should also not be discontinued suddenly. And that's really important, right? So I put the statistic right here, which is honestly pretty shocking. 33% of people surveyed said they've stopped taking a drug without consulting a doctor. So that's huge. So if there's one thing that I always make sure to inform a patient about, it's that you should never stop a medication unless you're experiencing some sort of very serious side effect without consulting your doctor first. Because sometimes the side effects after stopping a medication can actually be worse than when you're on the medication. For instance, if you suddenly stop a CCB, you have a much higher risk for that irregular heartbeat, those arrhythmias, and a sudden increase in blood pressure, which if a person already has cardiovascular disease, that could lead to a heart attack, stroke, any number of other very, very serious problems. Now, side effects for calcium channel blockers, they include peripheral edema. That's the swelling of limbs, especially in the ankles. The, the fluid pools at the lowest point in the body. So many times people's ankles will swell. Also fatigue. The main side effect for calcium channel blockers is probably headache and dizziness, especially upon standing suddenly. So that's called orthostatic hypotension. Just a fancy term for standing up too quickly and getting dizzy, potentially fainting as well. Calcium channel blockers also have varying degrees of constipation, and they can also cause gingival hyperplasia, which is a swelling of the gums, which is pretty nasty to look at. So let's start off with our first calcium channel blocker, and that's amlodipine. You see amlodipine everywhere. It treats both hypertension and angina, and also is very useful in reducing the risk or prophylaxing for stroke, myocardial infarction, MI, or heart attack, as well as death by cardiovascular disease. So there have been studies with amlodipine that show that taking amlodipine regularly, if you have cardiovascular disease, significantly lowers your chance of having some sort of event and it prolongs the life of people with CV problems. Now, it often gets combined with other medications. So for instance, amlodipine is combined with benazepril, which is an ACE inhibitor, and you get sort of a dual action going on. So it gets paired with the ACE inhibitor benazepril as one single pill. So that not only reduces the amount of pills you have to take, it also lowers blood pressure by relaxing and widening the blood vessels and working in two separate ways to get a additive effect, which can actually be very, very useful. So that's low trail when they're combined together. Now, as always, caution in elderly uh, 65 plus because of the hypotension risk, you especially want to worry about counseling in a more older geriatric patient to not stand up too quickly because 
what happens? Their bones are a little bit more fragile than um, a younger, healthier person. So if they stand up too quickly and faint, they could break a hip, they could break a bone. It could be very, very problematic. So always advise them if they're getting up from a sitting or a laying position to just take their time when they suddenly are prescribed these calcium channel blockers. Now, amlodipine is nice in that it's not as likely as verapamil to have the traditional side effects of calcium channel blockers. So it's better tolerated by patients. And for that reason, you'll see amlodipine prescribed. So when I saw that this drug was in the top 200 drugs, I was not surprised at all. I'm sure it's probably even in the top 20 or 30. Next, we have deltiazem or cardizem, cardia XT. Uh, there's always a ton of deltiazem and cardizems. There are these big capsules that you can see right down there, but you see a lot of them on the shelves in the pharmacy. Now, why is there a lot of them? They come in a lot of doses because they treat multiple cardiac conditions. That includes hypertension, arrhythmia, tachycardia, a high heart rate, and chronic stable angina. So if someone has chronic chest pain that's related to the heart. It works by slowing the contraction rate of the ventricles of the heart. So it blocks those calcium channels and widens those arteries and veins that are going through the heart and supplying it with oxygen. And the nice thing about diltiazem is that it's available in both tablets and extended release or XT capsules. The side effects, it has all of those traditional CCB side effects that I previously said, except it doesn't have as much constipation as verapamil. And this is just another review of arrhythmias. Again, you can check out the other video if you want a more detailed explanation, but you can see that's what a normal heart rhythm looks like versus an irregular heart rhythm. So a lot of times if a person has an arrhythmia, they may be prescribed diltiazem in addition to some other drugs for that. Next, we have nifedipine. Uh, there's two ones that you can look out for, nifedipine IR and nifedipine ER. Uh, nifedipine IR is called Procardia, and it's an immediate release formulation for short acting. Um, it's, it can be used for cr um, chronic or sudden angina, like sudden chest pain, if it's sudden onset. It's not used for chronic hypertension. So that's the difference between the IR and the ER forms. Nifedipine IR is not used for chronic hypertension because it's way too strong. And through varying studies, they've been able to determine that it just causes such a sudden drop in blood pressure that the really the risks outweigh the benefits in terms of using it because it might increase your chance of having a heart attack or stroke if you're using it to treat that high blood pressure. Now, nifedipine ER is Procardia XL. Um, easy to remember that it's ER because it's an XL drug, right? It's a long acting capsule, extended release, and it's used to treat hypertension or, or chronic stable angina, chronic chest pain. Now, cautions again with that orthostatic hypotension, standing up from a laying down or sitting position too quickly, especially in older adults. And lastly, we have verapamil or Calin. Again, treats multiple cardiac conditions, including multiple types of angina, hypertension, um, it's usually only used for hypertension as an add-on therapy. They'll be taking something else, and then they'll add the verapamil, maybe to get an additive effect. And then also tachycardia for a very fast heartbeat. Works the same way as all the other calcium channel blockers, and it's available in both tablets and capsules, controlled and extended release formulations. Now, verapamil is known for having sort of the worst side effects of all of the CCBs. It has more constipation than diltiazem, sometimes to such a great extent that it does require a laxative to be co-prescribed with verapamil, just to get things going, especially if you're taking this medication regularly for a chronic condition like hypertension. So that's just about it. Thank you very much. And you can email me with any questions.